Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's forecasting webinar. Our presenter today is Steve Baker of Business Technology Associates. Steve has 25 years of experience working with Infor's Cloud Suite and Sightline ERP systems. He is a CPA and an APIC certified production and inventory control manager. Previously, he managed a consulting practice for a worldwide consulting firm and was a CFO for a multi-site manufacturer. I'm going to let Steve take it from here. Steve? Thank you, Wendy. Uh, good afternoon. So we're going to be covering uh, you know, two products, and I want to differentiate between them as there can be some confusion. There's the Cloud Suite forecasting application and then the Cloud Suite site plan, which is sales and operations planning. And um, just kind of with different companies having different terminologies uh, in this world of demand planning and um, balancing supply and demand, uh, let me clarify how these two products fit in. So the forecasting product is really just for the demand planning side, uh, which what material planners would work with in using the MRP or APS system. So its primary focus is in developing a unit forecast that drives the material planning system. You know, typically a process that's done each month or revised each month. And uh, it's dealing with unit quantities, it's dealing at the SKU item level, uh, but it, it also can be used to develop forecasts based on customers or warehouse or, or salespeople. The SNOP process, uh, the application we call site plan, is kind of the next level beyond just demand planning. So it's, it's planning for revenues and margin, cost of goods sold, setting goals, uh, managing attainment towards those goals. It's all around the process um, of bringing the company together around an integrated management process to balance so supply and demand. So we will start off with the forecasting application uh, and then I'll go into uh, site plan. Usually I will uh, hear people say things like, uh, we need to decrease our shortages or late shipments, or that our inventory is growing out of control. Those are the sort of comments you hear when it starts to make sense to implement a automated forecasting application. Uh, the companies start feeling like their manual approach of using spreadsheets is really not very repeatable, not very structured. Uh, many times people say, yeah, I just feel like we're just guessing at what our demand is and that it's not really an organized process. Uh, so this application is develop, developed around the idea that uh, you want to develop a efficient, organized approach to right-sizing your inventory and predicting demand. This may be uh, rather elementary for many of you, but just to kind of review how the Cloud Suite or Sightline um, material planning process works and where this application fits in. So this is very simply stated, uh, to run the material planning system, you, you enter your demand into CSI, and by demand I mean your forecasts, your customer orders, which is, is really just due dates, item numbers, and quantities. Then you run the planning system, and that explodes that demand by time phasing it through the bills and material. Then it compares that exploded demand to your supply, uh, what you have on hand, what you're planning to make, what you're planning to buy. Then it applies to the calculation, what I call inventory drivers, which are what are your desired safety stock levels, order mins, lead times. And it does a bunch of number crunching and then it kicks out what we call the material plan. Uh, and really all the material plan is is just uh, a suggestion of work orders and purchase orders uh, that need to be released or adjusted in some way. And there's a tool in CSI in the standard product called the Material Planner Workbench. And that's where you re review those suggestions and then you can mass release the work orders and purchase, order, purchase orders uh, from that tool. Where this forecasting application fits in is what I have in blue and underlined. So everything else on here is done in CSI. However, CSI doesn't have an ability to calculate forecasts 
or calculate safety stock levels or order mints. So that's where this application fits in. This is what um, a monthly process, some companies do it weekly, but typically monthly process would look like using this forecasting application. It's very much uh, like a manual or Excel process. It's just integrated and automated. So step one is that the system will collect all your historical sales. Then you essentially click a button and it calculates your forecast for thousands of items and safety stocks. Then you are presented with a workbench where you can evaluate those calculated forecasts in a sandbox, uh, compare them to what's actually been happening in demand. Uh, you receive different types of alerts and such as to which items may not be tracking very well, but it just gives you some analytical tools to um, kind of get comfortable with that forecast that's been calculated. Uh, at that point, you can use this workbench to uh, adjust the forecast, either in groups or individual item numbers. Uh, and then when you're finally happy with what you have come up with, then you click a button and it loads all the forecasts into the planning system. In deciding whether an automated forecasting application would make sense for your company, there's really kind of two questions uh, to address. First off, what do you want to forecast? And then how do you want to forecast that? In the what side, you have really three options. And, and this is with you know any forecasting, uh, any automated forecasting system is, do you want to forecast sellable items? And by that, I mean the items that actually appear on the customer orders. Uh, if you're a make the stock, a, a catalog type of manufacturer, you tend to sell the same items over and over again, then of course this makes a lot of sense. If you're more of a engineer to order, uh, maybe even make to order type company, then you don't sell the same item numbers over and over again. So you need to forecast uh, your components, your raw materials. The third approach is if you're more of a configurable manufacturer where you have base models of a product, but they have lots of different options to them. So you're very regularly building new bills of material, uh, even though they're based on uh, a basic standard core product. And that approach we refer to as using a planning bomb or forecasting a planning bomb uh, to uh, to present what the demand is to the planning system. So once you decide which of these three methods you would use for the what you want to forecast, then you have to decide how you want to forecast that. The most straightforward, um, easy to implement way is using statistical algorithms. Uh, essentially the system has uh, the ability to look at uh, trend patterns, be it seasonal, end of life, new product, uh, type of history and then use the algorithm to project what will happen in the future. The next approach called collaboration or roll up is more where you uh, consider what the statistical calculation would be and you still look at history but history is not necessarily what you want to use to drive the forecast. Instead, you want to get input from customers or from salespeople or multiple sources and use that in a, a workbench to gather all the information, weigh it in different ways, and then develop a consensus forecast. <clears throat> the third method, much less common, is where a company establishes their uh, revenue goals and then they use that to define what their demand will be. Uh, call that a top-down approach where you use a revenue plan and then disaggregate that down to the individual SKU level uh, to use in the, the planning system. Now I'll kind of overview each one of these methods a little bit, explain them a little further, and then we'll get into the actual product and I'll show you how they work. So the, the statistical method says, hey, what happened in the past? It's very likely to happen again in the future, at least to some degree. So we want to gather that 
sales history or demand history, apply a statistical model to it to project it into the future. But, of course, we need to be able to adjust that. So we give you two different ways to adjust what the system has come up with. Method one would be you have uh, groups of products that might have um, promotions for an entire group or something in, happening in the economy that affects an entire group of products, and, and you would like to adjust the whole group with a single entry. There might be other situations where individual items uh, would need to be adjusted for things that you know, but the statistical model doesn't know, like an item's being discontinued or a uh, maybe a price adjustment uh, might affect the demand for just a particular item. So after you go through these, the calculation, the group adjustments, and then the item adjustments, then you have what we call a net forecast, which is what is loaded into the planning system. The collaborative method is quite a bit more work on your part because it's gathering lots of different opinions or data points to consider. Uh, there are different hierarchies to how this can be rolled up. This is the most common one that I see where we gather information uh, from customers or maybe the salespeople tell us what they think their customers are going to buy. But the, the net with this example I have in this PowerPoint is that we have, let's say, three major customers that make up most of the demand for an item. Could be one, could be 10, but just a, a handful. And then you also have uh, many other customers that buy the product, but yet uh, don't make up enough of the demand to be worthwhile of going through trying to predict each customer individually. So you work on these one, two, or three major customers and maybe import a forecast from the customer. Uh, might also do a statistical projection of just this customer buying just this item. Or gather a marketing manager's opinion or other opinions. Then you take all of these values, the, the customers that you built a customer level forecast for, along with a statistical calculation on everyone else, and that rolls up into a total forecast for an item. Just to kind of show a, a variation to that, this would be where maybe we're not gathering a customer level type forecast, but we're getting a forecast for each salesperson or each warehouse. Uh, there's lots of different choices for that bottom level of the hierarchy. And then those work in the same way where you gather multiple opinions and then roll them up to a total forecast. The third method method I mentioned was the top down. Uh, we have this is part of the site plan, the sales and operations planning product, where you have the ability to build a revenue plan in different dimensions. And then those uh, totals of say, uh, revenue by customer type or by product code can then be disaggregated down to the item level. Now, my point here is I'm expecting some of you uh, have heard me go through this and say, well, gosh, we use almost all of those methods uh, depending on what the product line is. And that's what this product supports. Is So you can have some items you defined as being very easy to manage. You just want to replenish the item when you run low. So we offer a solution for what we call reorder point management where the system just calculates the trigger point at which it generates another um, buy or make order. Or you might have a product line that's more standard products or maybe even replacement parts um, that is the same items you sell over and over again and you want to forecast the sellable items for those product lines. However, other product lines uh, are more of a uh, engineer to order, uh, have common components, so you want to forecast the components. And yet even another category where maybe you have a configurable product line and you want to use a planning bomb uh, approach for those products. So all four of these methods can be combined in the same CSI site uh, and used to come up with a combined demand plan for the company. 
to explain a little bit more about each one of those work because uh, first off at the, the component level forecasting, um, some of you may have said, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, I know that sight line the, would allow me to enter a forecast for my components, but the problem is the sight line doesn't consume those forecasts. Sightline is based on the idea that uh, when something goes on to a sales order, that's what offsets or consumes the forecast. Well, what the forecasting application does is it takes over that consumption logic and will consume the forecast based on actual usage, no matter whether it's job issues or shipments or, or whatever the method is. It's just not dependent upon it being on a customer order. Uh, when you implement a method like that, you're given a simple form where you just tell the system what do you consider to be history and transactions that will consume the forecast, and you'll recognize these as being the different types of material transactions that are in CSI, um, and you just check off the ones that you want to use. For planning bomb forecasting, this is typically used where you have a, a family of products, a, a base model with multiple options, and you want to forecast the base model. You don't want to forecast each one of the possible variations. So the, the way it works is you create what we call a planning bomb. This is something a little different than what uh, CSI calls a planning bomb that's used by the features and options configurator. It's a much more complicated process than this. This is a rather simple planning bomb that contains the base item plus all the options. Um, and then you develop what we call a, a forecast as relationship. So whenever you sell one of these options, then it will consume the forecast for the base model. One thing nice about this approach is you can set it up where uh, a lot of companies want to drive demand for the components, but not drive the demand for any final assembly. So you can set up these planning bombs in a way where it's the actual customer order that drives the demand for releasing a top level final assembly job, but the demand for all of the components or purchase parts is driven by the forecast. Kind of a quick example of that, uh, very simple. We got a bicycle here and it can be sold as either a 10 speed or a 20 speed bike. And so we wanna set up the base model as being everything that's common to both the 10 speed and the 20 speed bike. And then we wanna set up that we've got uh, a couple of configurations, one being the 10 speed bike, another being the 20 speed bike. This shows you what the forms kind of end up looking like in forecasting where we have this planning bomb set up here. We, we call it the bike P-bomb. And it can uh, have a lot of other things besides just the 10 speed and the 20 speed, like it could be a red bike, a green bike, it could uh, have the 10 speed or 20 speeds and so on. Then when you look at this planning bomb, it shows you what you have currently set up as your, your planning percentages. Uh, Basically, this is saying here that like, you know, with the, the wheels, there's uh, gonna be two of those in every single bike. However, there's only a 40% chance of green paint and only a 40% chance of red paint. Then it shows me right here in this planning bomb what has actually been selected in the past over the past year, three months, six months, and so forth. So I can see here 29% 20, of the time over the last year, our customers have picked green paint and that helps me in, in setting up my planning percentages. Also shows me here another form, how many times each month I've sold each configuration. So my 10 speed bike, you can see how many times each month I've sold it versus the 20. All right, let's jump into the actual forecasting application. Uh, I'm gonna show you how we uh, review history how we review the variances between the forecast and the actual. Then we'll calculate a statistical forecast. We'll calculate a roll-up or consensus forecast. And then I'll show you how the, the safety stock reorder point level calculations work.
This is the home page for the forecasting application. Uh, it has here on the left-hand side a list of all the items that I have selected to forecast. It's not my whole item master, it's just those my forecasting items. And if I look at the, uh, the, the grid view for that form, you'll see some of the specifics that are kept track of in the forecasting application. Of course, the item number and description, but we also allow you to assign different groupings you can use the groupings that are already in CSI, like product code, for instance, but then we give you user-defined groupings for even um, grouping the products in, in more ways than what the base product allows. You might remember these groupings are used for one for analyzing the forecast, but they're also used for adjusting groups of forecast with a single entry. Also show you here what the monthly average demand has been and we compare that to the average forecast in the future. So you can get a snapshot view here of how close the uh, actual demand is to what you're forecasting. Here we have exception codes that are automatically generated by the system uh, when you calculate the forecast. Things like, is the forecast tracking along with the actual demand? So by tracking, um, we would mean that uh, there's not been a large uh, spike in demand that would uh, cause your forecast to be prematurely consumed. Uh, there's also a, 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 a trending exception. Uh, for instance, that would be where I've been projecting a 5% increase in demand each period, and the actual has been 10%. So even though it hasn't caused me a problem yet with uh, running out of inventory or consuming my forecast, uh, it will eventually uh, give me a problem. Here you can see the statistical model that's been chosen to forecast a particular item. Last thing I'll point out is the, the service level, and this is actually a value that you enter in the system, and it tells uh, the calculations how much inventory you want to carry. So if you desire to have an 80% service level, that's saying I want to be 80% confident I don't run out of this item. Uh, compare that to, say, putting in a 90% service level. Well, if you desire to be 90% confident, then the system's going to suggest that you carry a little more inventory than an 80% confidence level. We drill into a particular item here to demonstrate some concepts. This um, FA20,000 bicycle, uh, when I selected it, the system popped up and said, uh, or presented to me, some notes I have typed in the system that I want to be reminded of when I come into this area where I can adjust the forecast. So it's reminding me here that this item is going to be discontinued in November. I can see that here in this lower right-hand corner, how I've dealt with that being discontinued, in that in November, the system calculated a forecast of 149, then this item belonged to groups where that would be increased by 22%. However, because I'm uh, going to be discontinuing this item, that's been overridden to be zero. So in this green column, that's the net forecast that goes through the planning system. So a zero demand uh, after October will be presented to the demand planning system give you one other example. So say up here in February where you see it all coming together, we have 149 units that was calculated by the system, a 12% increase uh, due to groups the item belongs to, and then we multiply that by one. That means, you know, don't change it. So then I end up with 149 increased by 12%, so I get 167 that is passed on to the demand system. Over here, you see a simple quick graph that shows me the calculated forecast and the adjusted forecast. And then in this yellow line here, it overlays on the forecast what the previous 12 month actual demand was. So you can see that relation. Here in this section of the form, you see five years of history. Uh, that's in unit quantities. However, you can 
toggle this to be in dollars or units. You can even select to display all products in the same category as this item, uh, basically rolling up a bunch of items into the totals here. All very helpful, of course, to kind of see this demand history as you're deciding if you're comfortable with the forecast or not. A more powerful tool for analyzing history is the sales analysis capability. This one allows me to look at a range of dates in the past and then generate an interactive report that shows me in its default view all of my customers and then if I explode a customer it shows me what items a customer purchased over the period of time I asked for. You highlight the different sections and as you highlight a section it builds a graph down below. Those graphs can be presented in different ways. Get a I like, kind of like the bar chart. And then besides the chart, it builds an automatic legend for you uh, telling you what the components of the chart mean. This can be exploded, so I'm seeing totals for years, but I can explode those into months. I can double click on any period and drill down to the actual data. I can manipulate my view to be uh, kind of like an Excel pivot table, if you're familiar with that type of functionality where maybe I don't want to look at sales by customer and then item. Uh, I want to look at it by item first and then by customer. And if I just move my icons around, now if I explode item, I see the customers. Or I might look at that and say, oh, that's much too detailed. I really want to analyze uh, sales by, say, by salesperson. If I just drop that in, Dragging it off the screen. So now you see how I have sales by salesperson. I can say get rid of the item level. Now if I explode a salesperson, I see the customers they sold to. And it works just that way with any of these fields. So I can look at it by type of customer, by product code, you know, really any of the dimensions that you might want to evaluate um, of fields that are on sales orders. Some more helpful information about comparing forecast to history and analyzing is a little drop down here to build uh, some on the fly graphs of different information. The forecast graph will show me, uh, I'll just do it for this item. So it built a Excel graph that shows me 24 months of sales history and then shows me my 12 month forecast in red. I also could generate a a graph that shows how good of a job I'm doing forecasting this item or group of items. This one looks similar, however, it gives me 36 months of history in red, I'm sorry, in blue, and then in red it overlays on what I did forecast to what actually sold. So I can see that my blue bars, the actual demand, looks like it has some seasonality to it where I get more demand in the summer months and then a lot of orders at the end of the year. So I've been doing a pretty good job of, of getting the average demand of this item, but I'm certainly not picking up the seasonality of demand. I'll show you how I might want to deal with that. If I go to the calculations tab, you'll see that I've told the system to use a horizontal model and to look at um, 24 months of history. 
I could ask the system to tell me if it thinks there's a better way to forecast this item. So I choose this automatic selection. And it goes out and runs all the different types of models and presents each one to me with what the variance would have been in the past and then ranks them. So as you might have guessed, it's decided that a seasonal model would have been a better way to forecast this item. So if I would like to switch to that method, I can agree with its suggestion. And then it's going to tell me to make sure that I'm setting my, my months of history to be 24. Uh, because you wouldn't want to use just 12 months of history to try to pick up a seasonal pattern. So now if I go back and see what it did with that method, you'll see now that this forecast is not the 149 units every period, that now it varies by period. And I could actually look at that in the graph, maybe get a better idea of what it did. And now you'll see there's that same 24 months of history, but to calculate the forecast, it's picked up on that seasonality and built a forecast for me that matches that. So that's uh, the statistical type approach. I told you I would also show you the collaborative or roll up type approach. So this is a different workbench that feeds back to the main screen. This one, uh, in my demo example, I have four items here that I have decided to use the collaborative approach to forecast. I've set it up to be a hierarchy where I forecast by customer, and then those roll up to this FA 10,000 item level. So if I highlight a particular customer, then it presents me with a screen of a lot of detail, different opinions, um, different data points that I want to consider as I come up with a forecast for this item. So it gives me some that it calculates on its own, then it allows me to gather some and input here. So the, the ones that the system brought in on its own was it looked at what the demand was for this customer and for this item two years ago, last year, what my forecast for this customer was last year, then it compares that to a statistical calculation of a forecast, and then I've set up three user-defined, you could put whatever labels you want on these, and you could use one of them or all three of them. Uh, my example shows where I'm, I'm getting input from the customer, I'm also getting some input from a salesperson, and then I have a marketing manager, or product line manager that I also got input from. All of this information is then graphed above where I can see the relationships to each other. I can turn on or off different segments of the graph by just clicking on their labels here below. So I can compare those different opinions. And then in the end, what I'm working towards is filling in this forecast column with what I want my forecast to be. Uh, I could do it by just saying, well, you know what, I'm normally going to go with the customer forecast and just default this to be the customer. Or I could come in here and, and select any one of these and say I want to copy, in this case, the salesperson's forecast, just copy the whole thing right over to the forecast column so I don't have to do a bunch of data entry. Then as I'm going along and thinking through this, I can put in notes at the customer level at the item level, even all the way down to the item, customer, and period level to uh, record what my logic, what my thinking was as I came up with the forecast here. So that next month when I come back and evaluate the forecast to see how we're doing, I can see what justifications I was using. Last thing I thought I would show here in the forecasting application is the uh, safety stock and reorder point calculations. Again, this is another workbench. Uh, an example I'll use here would be, let's say I want to calculate the safety stocks for all of my items in a particular location. So I would 
select what to filter on. Let's say I want to work on my main warehouse. Then the system uh, looks at all the items that I filtered for, comes back and presents me with, I'm going to show you the detail first here, presents me with the information it used to come up with a calculated reorder point and a calculated safety stock level. Let me kind of point out here about one of them. So the things it's considering is, for one, what the lead time of the item is, also what service level I desire for the item, and then it also looks at the variability in demand, we call that the mean average deviation, and then it also looks at average usage. Factors all these items together in a calculation and then presents to me a calculated safety stock, in this case seven, and compares it to what I currently already have in the system, which is 20. And then in this sandbox, I can decide if I want to go with the calculation or if I want to override it, uh, if I want to go with a safety stock type of calculation or with a reorder point type calculation. Well, you might be saying, what's the difference between those two? Uh, the general concept behind this is, is if you are forecasting an item, then you want to have a safety stock for it. And uh, that calculation would give you a, a lower quantity than if you weren't forecasting the item, but you were solely managing it by just a trigger point or a reorder point. So you can see my safety stock I would need to carry would be seven. However, if I'm using that value to just trigger a replenishment, it's going to be a little bit higher. I review through this information. I can check off the ones I agree with like this. Uh, I can select to check them all off in one move and then uncheck the ones I don't agree with, however you like to maneuver about the form. Then you come back to the main form and you select to post and it will take all the items that you have checked off and it'll update the warehouse. Uh, safety stock fields. Point out a few other things about the form. Uh, here down below, it shows me uh, 18 months of usage. So you can see why I had kind of a high uh, mean average deviation uh, for variability of demand for this item because I've had these periods with very low demand and then some periods with real high demand. So it's going to suggest a little bit higher uh, safety stock level. This smaller graph shows me what effect the desired service level has on how much inventory I need to carry. So if I want an 80% service level, I only need to carry about seven in safety stock. However, if I want to be 99% confident I never run out of this item, it's going to suggest that I carry closer to 20. All right, let me move on over to the site plan product now. Uh, we're going to have questions at the end, uh, so please kind of save those on forecasting. Try to remember them, and uh, we'll try to catch all those at the end. As I mentioned before, this site plan or sales and operations planning application uh, kind of incorporates the demand planning, but it kind of takes it to the next level of uh, doing all types of planning and balancing supply and demand. So the things I will typically hear from companies who might have an interest in this application is they say, well, you know, CSI does a pretty good job of accounting and tracking inventory and recording data, but we really need something to help us more with figuring out how well we're doing and what we need to fix. We just need a, a better tool for helping us plan and managing that demand supply balance. We do that now, but it's really kind of tedious and difficult and takes a lot of time because we're using lots of offline reports and spreadsheets and we really would like something more integrated. So this tool is about having some uh, predefined forms that are interactive and help you with building a uh, integrated, organized process that helps you 
align your company activities around that balancing supply and demand. The main goal behind it, uh, kind of the structure, is it, it doesn't dictate a particular sales and operations planning process, but rather gives you a set of tools to choose from to help you with implementing whatever approach you want to take to SNOP. It follows the basic concepts that uh, are taught by the American Production and Inventory Control Society and the Institute on Business Forecasting in that the purpose of the process is to maximize your customer fill rates, optimize inventory levels, and optimize profits with really these four legs. Uh, first being to set sales goals and then track attainment towards those goals, to plan your production, manage the supply chain, manage your inventory levels, and manage the backlog. Really all of this starts with creating a uh, a sales plan, some call it the annual operating plan, uh, some even call it a forecast, but this is a, a revenue plan built around uh, the products and SKUs that are already in the sightline application. And then giving you a bunch of tools after you have that plan to conduct some effective SNOP meetings to analyze uh, what your plan was and how you're doing towards those plans. What types of plan does it give you? Well, a, a revenue plan because, well, Sightline already knows what your pricing is and it already knows uh, or can know what your quantity uh, demand plan is. It knows what your costs of your products are so it can be used to develop a cost and margin plan. It can be used to develop a production units plan because a an annual operating plan or sales and operations plan includes uh, units, quantities, prices, and costs. It can be used to develop a workforce plan, which is uh, what people work in what departments, what are they paid, what are their planned hours, when do they plan to have overtime, uh, what is your plan for hiring or reducing re workforce in the future. And then finally, a materials demand plan, so it the system will synchronize the revenue plan and production unit, units plan with the demand plan that you're using in the MRP system. Just as a few more, maybe more specific examples of what I'm talking about, I won't read all of this to you, but uh, the, the tools that are offered here for you to choose from include things about, um, gee, are we selling more or less than what we planned? Uh, do we have potential, future potential problems with shortages or on-time deliveries? Uh, are our forecasts reasonable considering what our workforce and capacity of equipment is? I realize this is a bit of an eye chart, but it shows you how it takes you through the process of identifying problems in those areas. So let me just kind of a high level sort of review this in that it it is a, a monthly process again, typically, where the first step is to build that multi-dimensional sales and margin plan. I have a tool called the SNOP Workbench that builds that plan. Um, I'll show it to you here in a minute, but it just uses the data that's already in Sightline to help you come up with that plan. Then it gives you some reporting tools where you can compare plans like I have a plan A, I have a plan B, I have different assumptions behind these different plans, help me with comparing them. Uh, also gives you some tools for once you've selected the plan that you want to uh, use to, to drive the company goals, then it gives you tools to look at that plan and compare it to what's actually happen, happening on a monthly basis. The next step is uh, some tools that you could be, they can be used partway through a month to see if you're on track. So one's called the current month analysis that takes, oh, I'm on the 15th of the month and I want it to take where I am and project towards the end of the month to tell me based on my constrained supply and my backlog, what will my sales be in each of my product categories by the end of the month and how does that compare to my goals? 
Uh, there's also task management capabilities here uh, that can help with managing the SNLP process throughout the month. The next piece of it is looking beyond the current month towards supply demand problems that could happen in future periods. Uh, capacity analysis that it might affect you in future periods. Then if you've managed the current month, you've looked out to future months, then the next thing you want to be able to do is to look back to last month to see how you did and analyze that. So we have tools like um, what was the plan versus the actual sales and were there supply issues that caused us to not make our plan. And then finally, there's a, some analytical type tools that let you, for instance, analyze your forecast versus actual versus how frequently the forecast changed over time, which could be causing you some planning problems. Some graphical tools that look on look at uh, on-time shipment performance as well as um, on-time shipment from your suppliers. I'll show you a, a little bit of this. Um, mostly, I think I'll just show the, the, the workbench. This is a screenshot out of, of it, but I'd like to show you the actual tool insight plan. Let's go to uh, the actual application, and you'll see it's got a home page that looks like any other part of Sightline with the most commonly accessed links. The uh, starting place, as I mentioned here, is this. SNOP plan workbench. The idea here is that you're starting off with a blank sheet of paper, but you want to populate it with some data. And you can select as your beginning source to be to look at actual sales order history and to either look at the seasonality of that to give me a starting plan or just pick up monthly averages. Or I could look at the forecasting application to see what we've already built in our demand planning system and use that as my starting point. Or I could look at another plan A, plan B, and now I just want to put some other uh, options on it. Let's say, uh, for my example, I'll start with a, a seasonal approach of looking at a period of sales orders. I might decide that the last six months is the most representative period for what I think might happen next year or the year after, or it could be a previous three-year period, but uh, you just decide here uh, what period of orders you want to use as your base period for calculating averages. And I'm going to go with 2015, uh, since I know my data here. and then build my base plan. Now this interface will look familiar to you in that it looks and works a lot like that sales analysis tool I showed you in the forecasting application where it presents you with dimensions to build your plan by. The default in this case is that I have um, product code and then if I explode my product code, I build a plan by sales by, by customer, and then I can explode that to build a plan at the item level. Now, in looking at that, that may be more detailed than uh, what your company does when building an annual operating plan. So, like the sales analysis tool, you can select different types of dimensions. So maybe I want to um, oh, do away with the the item level and use um, customer type. I drop that in, get rid of item level, and then like sales analysis, I can highlight different segments here and it builds a graph for me automatically down below along with the legend. It allows me to um, move pieces around, so maybe I want to build my plan by customer type first and then break it down by product code. So here's my distributors, and here's my retailers. That those are categories of customers that come. You know that, that category is assigned in Sightline. And once I have my my plan built, 
I'm going to simplify it a little bit further. Let's go with this view. So here's my starting plan. You can see how it looked at the seasonality of my uh, past year that I identified. But uh, I believe that uh, for my plan that I can do about 10% better than this base period. So I could come here to uh, this grand total for company-wide, all products, all customers, and select that I want to increase that, say, times 1.1, increase it by 10%. So when I changed that grand total, it did what we call a top-down change, where it took that 10% increase and then pushed it down to every product, every customer, every salesperson, every dimension, even the ones, of course, that aren't displayed right here, increased them all by 10%. Uh, maybe I also realize that we're, uh, for some reason, going to have a very good July for due to promotions, and I believe for that month, then our sales manager wants us to go ahead and put 1.2 million in for just that one period, but across the board. So here is still another top-down type change, but see I changed the total for July and it pushed it to just all the products within July. I also can do a change um, for a particular product line, but do it across all periods. So here that TF product line was new last year. I believe that we're going to do 800 grand of it in my plan and see how it just changed just that particular product, but it did it for all types of customers across the board. I can also do bottom up type changes. Maybe I'm aware of now that I've gone down to the customer level that in September we're planning on getting a very large order in the PP product line from customer number one. So if I make a change in just this period, you'll see it changed just that customer, just that product line, but it rolled it up to the total for the month, the total for the year. So this is a type of process I go through. I um, won't get into much more detail here, but where I am uh, building up my plan, adjusting it, then documenting here in the notes section the types of changes that I've made from the base. I, and I document those changes by who I am that's making the change, uh, what dimension of the plan I changed, and what time period it was for, along with up to 9,000 lines of notes. Then when I get it to a point that I'm ready to save it, pass it along to someone else, I just select which plan I want to post it to and save it. I think with the time we have, I won't go into showing uh, very detailed screens about site plan, but I do want to show you what some of the finished products would look like with some screenshots that I have. Uh, this is a tool that's used to compare what the plan is to what the actual demand has been or actual sales have been. And it's a multi-dimensional tool. So you, you pick the dimensions that you want to analyze, and then you pick what level you want to drill down to. And then just like with the other tools, you can pivot by saying, well, first I want to analyze this as product code is my top level. So kind of the thought process is you would go through here is first start out and look at the site level and say, oh, what was our, across the whole company, what was our revenue plan broken down by product category? Then if you look at that and see a particular area that you want to drill into, you drill down to that particular product category and then can graph the details of that product, product category comparing the plan to what actually sold. The current month analysis, which was the one that you use when you're partway through the month to project through the end of the month, presents me with a demand plan that's already in the system, my supply plan that's, of course, already in Sightline CSI, and then uses that data to project through the end of the month 
a constrained sales level. It projects what ca product categories where I might have some supply shortfalls, and then projects my inventory levels in each of the product categories. This tool shows you a history of how the forecast has changed over time, where it presents you with your, your annual operating plan. Then it shows you what your forecast has been each period and how it's changed over time. And then also shows you what the actual demand has been. So what I've highlighted on this particular slide is that for this particular item, or it could be a group of items, in January we started off with a forecast of a quantity of one. And then the next month we increased it to 234. And then the next month we increased it to 662. So this forecast has been changing so rapidly over time that it's probably giving my material planners real heck trying to figure out how to keep up with what we're predicting our demand is going to be. This tool allows me to look out past the current month to project what my inventory levels and how many weeks of supply of inventory uh, I will have uh, in the, my different product categories. It's still, again, it's using uh, all the demand information that's already in uh, the Sightline product, uh, the supply information totaled up in the, the green, and then it projects the inventory level at the end of each week or of each month and also how many weeks of supply that will be at that point in time. And it does that in dollars or in units. This rough cut capacity form looks at my different, um, uh, whatever you set up to be your resource groups within Sightline. That could be uh, groups of people or groups of equipment. And then it shows uh, out over, I believe it's 18 months out into the future here, Oh, how many hours of capacity are needed each month, or how many, or what headcount is needed in each area. Uh, an on-time delivery performance form that gives a graph showing you over time what your on-time shipments have been. You can focus on just, just different customers or just different product categories. Uh, and it lets you drill down to the detail. Uh, that exact same form is presented on the uh, vendor side to evaluate on-time delivery performance. This is another pivot table type tool that lets you compare your forecast to actual, uh, but pivot on the different dimensions of salesperson, product category, type of customer. And it also will allow you to bring in uh, cost and margin uh, in that pivot table type analysis. Finally, this is the uh, the workforce planning, again, using that pivot table type tool that uses the employee data that you already have set up in Sightline to build a, a budget uh, for uh, what each person and each department will have in terms of hours and costs, and then let you put in different plans about planned uh, labor rate changes, hour changes, new hires, to build out that workforce plan. Yeah, this is my last slide uh, showing how, to, how it allows you to analyze what uh, your utilization of your resources have been by looking at job transactions and showing you basically at what percent of capacity you've been operating at, uh, whether you're overusing or underusing different assets. Great. Thank you, Steve. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. That concludes our webinar for today.